I have to thank the organizers for the opportunity to report about the results of our work. The topic is very provocative for many of those present here. And I'd like to show you why we've undertaken this um, measures. And so gastric cancer is the second uh, disease in mortality after lung cancer, despite the fact that the, uh, the incidence goes down still. Uh, as to mortality, it is in the first three group. With the absence of screening, only two countries of the world have population screening. Unfortunately, the majority of uh, uh, people with uh, gastric cancer have advanced uh, stages, and although in our population study there are three, 33 percent, we have to add 12 uh, percent of the third stage, despite the fact that gastric cancer is a surgical pathology. The majority, the vast majority of patients do not receive surgical treatment. And the figure of 35%, in my view, is too optimistic. It seems that registrators in our country, the same as in other registers, consider that uh, trial operations. The majority of patients, and this is the data population study of Russia, uh, in a Congress, so they not receive any treatment. At the same time, a significant share is the share of patients who are non-resectable because of uh, concurrent pathologies or high advancement of the tumor uh, with the absence of uh, distant metastasis. Chemotherapists and oncologists uh, unite uh, non-resectable advanced tumors with metastatic tumors into one group. If you look at the data of the studies in chemotherapy, you can see that. Nevertheless, probably there exists a proportion of patients who, with the absence of visible metastasis, do not have uh, or they have slowly developing microscopic mm, lesions. A big role can be played by local methods of treatment alongside with chemotherapy. At the same time, a big number of uh, issues uh, arise, which makes the use of radiotherapy quite a uh, problematic issue, such as radio resistance of tumor, the issue of uh, uh, Utility related to peristaltics as well as respiratory movements, and of course, it's related to the fact that stomach is located close to radiation in vulnerable organs, kidneys, liver, heart, and gastric mucus. Uh, the wall of the gastrum is also vulnerable radiationally. At the same time, radiotherapy is recommended in NCCN. Uh, ESMA does not have any mentioning, although it's been proven that the use of this method for obstruction symptom treatment, usually at cardiac uh, gastric cancer, and quite recently, the symptoms related to bleeding uh, was offered with the use of palliative symptomatic radiotherapy. In the studies, a dozen years ago, they raised the issue about the increase of total survival. Now, until recently, radiotherapy has been considered as a method that uh, in, has an impact only on the symptoms. Nevertheless, in our clinic, 10 years ago, we tried to understand what could be added 
while uh, carrying out uh, radiotherapy. We use the data of the studies. This study concerns preoperative radiotherapy at gastric cancer. It's a very small lettering here. If you look at two studies uh, conducted in the former USSR, uh, the frequency of full regression was 0 percent. Uh, this study was with a short course of radiotherapy and uh, after that uh, surgery. And there is a different situation when you look at the study where radiation and chemo radiation therapy course was prolonged and they the reproducible proportion was from 10, 20 to 30 percent of patients who had full pathological regression. So it's much better than uh, with uh, neoblastomas. As to motility, it's a big problem. In this situation with two-dimensional radiotherapy, it's not solved in a good way. It can be solved by uh, the increasing of the gaps. According to post-operative uh, radiotherapy, obtained at free breathing, the movement of the organs in the abdominal part, we see that craniocaudal movement are more significant for uh, kidneys and liver. At the same time, the movement to anterior posterior and to the left, li left and right are not very large. Once again, with 2D radiation, there is no other way out rather than the increase of uh, uh, the gaps, especially in anterior posterior direction. Besides, for gastric cancer, um, regional gastric cancer, which goes beyond the wall, um, this movement issue it's related to the following. It's, uh, it is related to the ligaments. The most frequent uh, cause of, uh, is spread to celiacus. Uh, and then during practical activities, to provide reproducibility, we teach a patient not to breathe deep during treatment and physiologically this treatment is reproduced similarly. So patients uh, have empty stomach before radiation. We give them a glass of water. Besides, there is the risk of later effects, and the risk is quite significant because uh, these organs are quite vulnerable to RT. But we assume that as far as the stomach and gastric cancer is concerned, all of, not all of these organs uh, get affected. If we look at the uh, our talk recommendations, we can see here quite big margins. Uh, if we uh, radiate an organ just partially, for esophagus, it's uh, 10 centimeters, heart 33%, kidney 33% by 15 gray, and so on. We should also keep in mind that the expect that life expect the average life expectancy without any treatment after they were denied surgical treatment is 46 months and. Uh, Chemotherapy doesn't help much for this severe group of patients. Keeping that in mind, we decided to implement this type of treatment for gastric cancer treatment, and we decided to compare its outcomes with symptomatic treatment. Nine years ago, these results were published. They showed the great advantages of RT with the advanced 
uh, gastrol cancer and three-year survival rate is 25 percent for patients who got uh, who got um, radical uh, therapy dose. As I've told you, we have been applying RT for gastric cancer for a long period of time, along with some other methods of treatment, uh, including chemotherapy, was, which was not recommended for this group of patients a number of years ago. That's uh, provided for the retrospective analysis of chemotherapy, RT, and other therapies. Groups vary significantly here with RT. All patients had them plus chemotherapy has many more advances. The average uh, survival rate was longer. After 40 grade dose, we adjusted the uh, dosage to the tumor size and we introduced extra dosage of 10 to 20 grade so they could end up with the 60 grade in total. For that study, we we selected patients with no less than two courses, and these are the medications that were administered for chemotherapy. That's what we get at the end, the blue curve, both for overall and uh, progressive survival rates, reflects the survival rate for RT only, but these were the patients with the best prognosis. The worst prognosis for both uh, criteria was relevant for chemotherapy, where the media survival rate was eight months that correlates with data received from other trials. In order to minimize the uh, wrong uh, staging and selection, there was the multiple cox selection made where chemo and RT were associated with uh, over doubled advantage in survival rate with reduced mortality compared to radiotherapy that inspired us to have prospective study that was uh, much more even in terms of patients distribution in this study we compared uh, chemor and rt therapy with consequent administration of these methods together with standard recommended chemo whereby this therapy included plan six courses of platinum storage cell. Each group had 32 patients. There was a small selection of patients and these are the outcomes. The survival rate at the last analysis achieved the trustworthy differences in the RT patients. Uh, it was three months longer compared to chemo patients, whereas the three year survival rate amounts to 19 percent. Five patients out of the whole group have survived. That's the non-progressive survival. How did we achieve that? Mainly due to the lack of local progression. That's the main difference, which is quite natural. The Cox analysis didn't show major differences between non-adjusted and adjusted data because those patients were the same. 
What's important to my mind is that in our study, we selected the patients without obstruction symptoms in order to analyze the survival rate. In the RC group, the survival rate was definitely higher compared to patients who got chemotherapy but didn't have symptoms. Toxicity spectrum in the foreseeable future is quite acceptable for both RT and chemo. And there was not a single death resulting from toxicity, and the outcomes are as follows. Gastrical cancer is sensitive to RT. Chemotherapy gives uh, advantage to compared to symptomatic treatment um, that is almost one year. The combined therapy is better than the standard recommended chemotherapy that they have in Europe. So we have no fear of radiating our patients with 3G conformity. RT, the number of uh, complications was minimal. We managed to introduce plan those uh, in a smooth and even manner. In the future, we plan to introduce IMRT uh, and practice camel on RT simultaneously. Thank you.